y'all ready for this? Hi folks, Roach here. Welcome to the latest in the series, uh, the Recon series. Uh, this is the first video that I've done in a while. Uh, I have been busy doing things around here. Uh, we've launched uh, a new business uh, uh, called Falcon Oaks Market, uh, Nursery and Market. Um, there is a website called falconoaksmarket.com. Uh, my wife, Ilion, is working on that right now, and uh, we've been uh, selling microgreens and eggs, and uh, there's some other things that are coming up. So uh, if you're interested, uh, check it out. If you're here in the Leander, uh, Round Rock, and uh, Cedar Park area, you might drop by or, you know, give us a ring, uh, and, uh, you know, we'll take you on a tour and, and show you some of the things we're doing around here. Uh, I did remodel my bathroom. Uh, I got some free materials that came in, and uh, I was able to clean that messy thing up. Uh, so I, I, I did some uh, some woodworking, and uh, it, it turned out really good. So this, along with some stuff that I've been doing on the yard, uh, it's been keeping me pretty busy. Uh, so you know, farming is hard work. So <clears throat> I, I would like to say first, uh, I want to thank all you folks out there that are. Uh, helping to support Ileon and I, and uh, mo more specifically, uh, this effort to actually educate people and get people up to speed, and <laughs> an attempt to provide a little bit of relief from the from the the suffering. Um, th there's been some incredibly destructive and uh, very very shocking information coming out here lately. I, I know it's taking people's emotional levels right to the floor, um, and then people are panicking and and. You know, look, it's part of the process. Uh, it's necessary. That doesn't make it any easier. I feel for you folks. But you folks that are actually helping out with this, and, 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 and don't get me wrong, okay? A lot of people that find this material don't find this material in a place where they're, you know, uh, they have a lot of resources. And, and, and that's okay. Um, do what you can. Uh, one of the most important things that one can do to help is to share, retweet, uh, and, and get this into hands of, of other people who are, are looking for real answers, right? Looking for real answers that don't involve uh, any kind of violent recourse, that don't involve anything, you know, truly complicated, because ultimately this is very easy. You know, it, 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 it's easy from the from the mechanic standpoint, but, but not necessarily, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll use an example. Um, it's as easy as jumping off a cliff, okay? The mechanics is easy. You just relax and fall forward. How, how hard could it be? Um, however, getting to the point where you're ready to do that and feel, have enough confidence to do that, and that's where, that's where it is. And there's a lot of context. We've been programmed, okay? I was programmed just like everybody else. Um, breaking through that kind of programming and, and, and changing, uh, allowing our perception to be changed, um, doesn't come without uh, some diligence, uh, doesn't come without a bit of courage, and 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 it doesn't come without a, a, a deep sense of readiness. All right, so <clears throat> the mechanics of slavery. Okay, uh, let's let's get into the uh, let's get into the presentation room. There we go. All right. The mechanics of slavery. Um, what's behind me? Uh, some of you might know what that is. Uh, somebody might think it's a mushroom door. Um, this is a long history. Okay. In the old days, when we had walls around our cities, okay, uh, there were times where there were invaders who were around the city and to protect the population from the invaders outside they would close the main gates of the city well that presents a problem uh, a lot of the activities uh, of these walled cities uh, as they expanded went beyond simply their uh, their walls and people who were there needed access uh, in and out of the city uh, irrespective of the main gates Okay, so uh, a lot of times there were farmers, uh, you know, merchants, uh, people needed to be in and out of the city. 
401k. Now, they didn't want a horde of invaders coming in, uh, flooding the city and taking over. So what they did, the solution was something that they called the eye of the needle. Okay, that's an eye of a needle. Okay, now <coughs> the eye, in, eye of the needle is very narrow. And if you move from side to side, you can't really see what's in it. Now, in, in, in the proper implementation, there would actually be a wall, so you wouldn't be able to see what was inside. You'd just see the wall, and then you'd walk in, and then you could go left and right. Uh, and that allowed the soldiers in the city to use very few people. Uh, they wouldn't be able to rush in mass to the door, and they wouldn't be able to shoot <clears throat> and hurt anybody, particularly unless they were in the doorway uh, with arrows or any kind of artillery. So it was a very effective means to, uh, to allow um, you know, people access to the city when the gates were closed and, uh, and, and also protect the, uh, the people of the city. There are some scriptural references, and I, and, and I know that immediately turns a lot of people off, but let's just say this. Uh, th there is documentation in old, old manuscripts, in old writings, on old clay tablets. Uh, people have been documenting principles in law for a long, long time, and the Bible is no exception. However, a lot of it is symbolic. A lot of it is... Uh, 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 you know, a function of an illusion or a parable, and it's encoded, okay? So there's a lot of folks that say, hey, you know, uh, th they take what's in the Bible literally, and there are places where you can do that. I'm going to say that, that, that that's not viable. But the real value of, of the document is, is in its symbolic and in encoded uh, elements, and, and the law is, is one of those things. So why is that important? Well, in order to escape slavery, you have to go through an eye of the needle from a symbolic sense. It's a narrow doorway, um, and the references in Scripture, okay, specifically in the, uh, in the authorized version of King James, are, are give you some clues at, at the complexity, or not the complexity, but um, the means of escape not being... Uh, necessarily uh, readily accessible to everybody, because you know what good is ha ha what good is maintaining control over a slave if you know if he, he very easily escape or free himself from his enslavement, right? Now we've been working a long, long time as a, as a people on figuring out wonderful ways of keeping the slave uh, trapped within the system. Uh, one of the things that were floating around, and I and I posted it on uh, on Twitter, and I'm not going to post it here because I don't want to I don't want to create uh, a controversy. That doesn't say that the man uh, calling himself P Professor Griff uh, was any less credible or authoritative. However, I I'm going to keep an arm's length with that. Uh, you can you can explore it, and I'm talking about the Willie Lynch letter. Okay, Willie Lynch, William Lynch. Okay, and this is where we get the word lynching from. Okay, and it's a specific doctrine on how to maintain control over a slave. Okay, um, in the case of the William Lynch letter, it was black slaves. But as as some of you know, um, black slavery uh, wasn't the only thing we were dealing with. There there was at least as many white slaves uh, early on in in the American history as black slaves and 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 of course later Chinese slaves. They were effectively slaves uh, working on the railroad and stuff like that. Uh, so there's a long history. Now the Willie Lynch letter uh, gives you uh, uh, keys on how to maintain control. Now in this video I'm not going to really talk about a lot of those elements. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, you know, the mechanics of slavery. Uh, and, and, folks, if you haven't really thought about these things uh, before, chances are you're effectively a slave, whether or not you, you perceive that to be that way or not. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that are really proud to say that here in America, uh, 
we're the freest nation on earth. Now, <laughs> given present circumstances, that's not saying very much. Uh, so, <laughs> and uh, uh, certainly there are many days out there where you folks are realizing that, you know, hey, uh, I, I don't feel free today. And, and, you know, and here's the truth. I mean, feeling free is quite a bit different from being free. Okay, you can feel free, uh, and that might mean that, that you've just found uh, a significant uh, enough distraction to keep you from actually thinking about it. All right, so l let's get into the, the, the first slide here. Uh, this is this is a quote from Matthew, and the, and the only reason I'm giving you this is because it'll give you key. It'll give you a key. Uh, it, it'll give you a hint because because uh, a lot of the times you know when I was going through this process, that's all I had were hints. Okay. Now there's a hint here. Okay, and it comes from Matthew 7:14. It says, "Because the uh, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it." Okay. Now that's a clue, right? What's he saying? Yeah, there'll be few of you who are going to find this. It not what I want. I I want I, I want this to be I want this to be common knowledge to everybody. Uh, if we have that, then we can ensure the protection of rights for everybody on this planet. Okay? You get that, too. It's a bonus, you know? Uh, so, you know, that, that... All right, so here's a clue, okay? Because the gate is straight and narrow, what are they referring to? They're referring to that... Th the concept of actually transitioning through this information. Okay? This the slave mechanical... Uh, the, the mechanics of, uh, of slavery. Okay? Because, uh, you know, first, you, you got to recognize that you're, you know, that there is a problem before you can, you know, even work to a solution. All right. So now he, he, the next reference is found in Matthew 19.24, uh, Mark 10.25, and Luke 18.25. Now, uh, clue you in. That's three times. Three. Oop, three. Sorry. Three. Okay. Usually, if they're telling you three times, you should pay attention. There is a clue here, okay? There's a clue here. There's something that you need to pay attention to. That's why they say it three times. Not an accident, folks. This is not the only time where they do this. It's three and only three, okay? All right, so uh, I'm just going to read the first one. He says, and I say unto you, uh, well, let me, uh, let me read the last one in Luke. He says, uh, for it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Okay. Now, why would people want to enter the kingdom of God? Well, the kingdom of God is within you, uh, and that's where the law is. And it is through a knowledge of that law, that reconnection with that law, that one gains the capacity to free themselves from, from, you know, slavery. Okay? So, when they say it's easier for a camel to go through the, eye, uh, the needle's eye than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God, what is he saying? Well... Here's here's the scenario you have to understand. Okay, if a, if a rich man is caught outside the gates when the gates closed, guess what? He's only permitted to go through the eye of the needle. Well, if he's got all his stuff outside, he it ain't gonna fit through the eye of the needle. So he's out with the enemy, and he can't. He, he uh, I mean, uh, he can't go in. Now, a, a camel or a wide animal. Um, it, it, to get him through, you, you got to squeeze him through. However, if you've got a wagon and if you've got all your junk outside, your entire household, uh, all of that stuff has to go through, and it is this huge operation. So not only that, but you're liable to get your butt kick for tying up the doorway. Okay? So that's what they're saying. Now, why are they saying that? Well, one, because it's a narrow door. That's what I'm getting at. And, and two... Uh, Having a lot of material possessions uh, is one of those things that runs against uh, this concept of freedom. Okay? Why? Well, because the more stuff you have, the more time you have to devote to, quote-unquote, protecting it or defending it to keep it. If you don't have that stuff, you don't waste all that energy and all that time. Okay? So that's the reference.
I mean, there's, there's, it's synonymous in many Eastern religions that this concept of material materiality is an impediment to actually freeing yourself. Okay, now call it enlightenment, call it uh, spiritual inspiration, uh, call it uh, epiphany, call it a, a revelation, um, uh, or you know a you know transfigurable uh, uh, event in your in your experience. Your material your material wealth does get in the way. Is it insurmountable? Absolutely not. It is surmountable. Uh, I attempt through uh, through something called the cheat sheet, Mark 5, to actually uh, provide people a way to where they can sidestep a lot of that. Okay. Now, the cheat sheet, Mark 5, I would suggest people actually go through and read that many times. And I would suggest they share it. Because it really does have the information about the Holy Grail, the, of, of the Arthurian legend, and how start to finish. Now, it's an evolving document. Read the thing. Follow the directions. And, and feedback is great. But get it out there, folks. Get it out there. And I put a link in the description. And anything I refer to, the link should be in the description of the video. So uh, you'll find it there. Okay? So now, all right, that tells us, okay, uh, your escape from slavery is a narrow door. Okay? It, it, it's narrow. So let's, uh, let's go on here. All right, slavery. You know, by the time you get the shackles on, all right, that's not the beginning of slavery, okay? Uh, when you get to the point where you've been, you've allowed yourself to be maneuvered into the place where they can physically restrain you, <laughs> you're already too far gone. Now, there are a lot of people that are walking around that are hopelessly enslaved, and they don't have shackles on, Okay? And there are people that are in prison that probably feel freer than anybody on the outside. <laughs> and why is that? Well, they don't have to worry about anything. They have very few obligations being inside jail. Very few. They don't expect a whole lot from you. Okay. Certainly, if you're outside, man, the obligations that you have just for the basic maintenance of your existence, I mean, it's, it's mind-numbing. Okay, but these people in jail, <laughs> they have very few obligations whatsoever. And some of them are very happy to be in jail. Okay, let me see if I can get to the next one here. Okay, slavery itself is not a hot, cold, zero or one, on, off uh, proposition. Okay, um, I... Like, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it's not an absolute. There's not a, you know, it, it, the boundary between freedom and slavery it, it, it is not clear cut. It's more like a uh, a spectrum. Okay, so as you see on the graphic here, it says increasing restriction and control is moving to the right. Okay, into the purple area. Um, and I, I, I didn't choose the colors for any particular reason. I just wanted them to be non-confrontational. Uh, so a, as you increase to the right, uh, you, there's more restriction and more control. And ultimately, on the left, all the way to the left, that is complete freedom. Okay. Now, slavery, being a slave, uh, there's, there's no fixed... Uh, a threshold. It moves. And, and why does it move? It, it not only does it move, but it is different for everyone. Okay? Everybody has an idea of, of what it is that, uh, uh, that would cause them to conclude that they were enslaved. Okay? Um, and and l let's look at freedom. Okay? The freedom is actually a misnomer. Um, that's not what you want, okay? Because if you go all the way to the left, you are totally free, okay? That's one man. Okay, only one man can be free. Everybody else would have to be subject to that one man. Now, what we want is equity, okay? We want equity, not freedom, okay? Because... Um, I, well, I mean, oh, let's look at it another way. I'm, I'm free to hit you upside the head with a hammer. OK, 
Okay, I can do that. You're not going to like it. Okay, and I certainly am not going to like the consequences of doing that. Now, if I could just hit you upside the head with a hammer anytime I wanted, and you could do nothing about it, and in fact, you, you could just, you know, I could expect you, because I'm free, uh, that, that after I hit you with a hammer, that you should tell me I'm a wonderful, great guy. Uh, that's freedom. And, folks, it's nothing that anybody here wants. What we want is, is equity. Okay, that, that's a little bit different. Okay, so the, the concept of a slave, okay, is, 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 is a variable thing, and it moves. I mean, there are some times where you feel free, and there are some times where you feel trapped. Um, a lot of people here in the United States, um, you ask them on April 15th, they'll tell you they feel like a slave. Um, you ask them on uh, the 4th of July, they'll tell you that they feel free. Okay, uh, has anything really changed in the circumstance? No, it was just merely how they f uh, how they feel. But generally, with respect to slavery, is you don't want to get to a point where uh, they don't. Well, you know, the people that keep the slaves, they don't want you to actually get to the point where you want to free yourself. It can be bad. You can feel restrained and restricted. But they always provide the, the negative reinforcement such that you don't even want to try. And you've been conditioned not to try by just about everything you've encountered. Your parents, your education, your school, your history, your literature, movies, news, government, your relationships with other people, all of that stuff has conditioned you to not even seek your liberation. Okay? So, let's get... Let me see if I can get to the next one here. All right. Oh, there is no next one. Let me see if I've got it here. Hmm, and I don't. All right. So... How does one become enslaved? Now, understand that I don't care how intelligent you are. The mechanics of slavery work on you. In fact, in fact, the more intelligent you are, the easier it is. Why is that? The intelligence, the intelligent are often too distracted uh, by... Uh, ideas, thoughts, feelings, concepts. Okay? So how do they go about doing this to you? Okay, well, they modify your perception. And let me see if I can put this up for you here. Uh, hmm. Odd. I didn't even. Let's see if it's up here. No, it's not. So let me let me open it up real uh, real quick. All right, because it's actually uh, real, maybe I'll just talk about it. The link is in the description, so you can see it. Okay, it's a document that was written in 2006, and the name I you know I don't have access to right now. Um, but the document was called Mind Control in the 21st Century. Okay, now the link's in the description. It is a lengthy document, and what it is is a treatment on, quote-unquote, mind control. And, and the first thing they tell you is that mind control is a misnomer. What they're really talking about is perception control. If you can control perception, you can control behavior. And where the body goes, the mind goes. And that's how it works. So what it does is it's a treatment of all of the, uh, many of the scientific studies that have gone into developing these perception control techniques. These things are used continually in advertising, the media, movies, almost every aspect of your life. Uh, these simple tricks 
are used to manipulate your perception. And they work. And they work better if you have no idea they exist. Okay? Now, that article uh, I read when it first came out in February 2006. For me, it was useful. It was one of those things that provided a clue for me to figure out, uh, figure out, untangle myself enough to actually uh, discover the Holy Grail. It caused me to think in new directions. Okay, why? Because all of a sudden, when you know the trick, the trick no longer manipulates you. Okay, and that document, uh, it, it doesn't have all the tricks, but it has a lot of the tricks. And if you read through it, they'll, they'll show you the scientific studies. They'll show you how, how, you, how you are coaxed into submitting to authority, how you are conditioned in that. Uh, the the uh, critical thinking fallacies are discussed. Uh, how the media employs particular strategies to, to, uh, conv to create the impression that uh, many people think in a particular direction. Because if many people think in a direction, wow, we think, wow, because a lot of people uh, think that way, then they must be right, right? You know, and, 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 and that itself is a fallacy. So it goes through and it shows you all of these little basic tricks. And once you know these tricks, you'll see them everywhere, at which point they totally lose their power. So the process of enslavement is perception control. One of the biggest elements of perception control is language itself. Okay? Language and law, right? Because language is used to document law. Okay? Describe law, define law, and set principles in, in contract. Okay? And, and relate information. Okay? So the spoken and written word is very important in the process of enslavement. Okay, uh, and and I'll go into uh, how it works here in a little bit, but that language, uh, that language is important because what we call law um, is is documented and related one to one, one another. We use language to relate these principles. Why? Because a long time ago we forgot to just simply pay attention to our life experience to learn these things. So now we have decided, we've been conditioned to rely on others to teach us, you know, how things are. <laughs> well, guess what? If I can control what you think things are and the way things are, then, then I, I can enslave you. Okay? And let's look at some of those, so, some of those ways, right? Now, <laughs> your education in law, if this is like the first time you've seen my material... Okay, you don't know what you're talking about. And that includes attorneys, a lot of attorneys out there, uh, judges. You deal in fiction. I don't deal in fiction. I don't counsel in fiction. I don't accept uh, fiction as uh, lawfully enforceable. And I don't, I, I don't look at fiction as, uh, as, uh, as useful to me in my experience. I, I do counsel in law, but nobody needs that. And certainly within our system, nobody needs counsel in law. They need counsel in fiction and procedure, and those are the, that's the job of the attorney, right? So a slave comes to the attorney and says, hey, uh, you know, I don't like this. And, you know, of course, the attorney uh, helps the slave uh, uh, feel better about himself. Okay? He isn't any, doesn't free him, of course, but he, he feels better. Or his circumstances changes to where he doesn't feel so much like a slave. Does he truly help him? No. Does he actually educate who he represents, the attorney? Does he actually educate them to the law? No, absolutely not. Okay. Doesn't, uh, it's not in his interest. Why, why would he do that? Uh, if people knew the law, they <laughs> wouldn't need attorneys. <laughs> not only that, but a lot of people who need the law would probably be getting rid of most of the attorneys, <laughs> and they'd be heading for the hills. So this idea of using language... Uh, show you the trick. It's very easy. Let's say you make a deal on a contract. You shake hands on the deal. It's a verbal, real law contract. Okay? Who controls the definition of words? 
do we collectively? Yeah, when when we're using the language that we use commonly between ourselves, yes. We, uh, why? Because you, t you you take us where you find us. You know. Yeah, we 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 know what what it means, right? However, in real law, especially when it's codified or written down, okay, uh, one of the important elements in the law is the terms and conditions and the applicability of that law. What does the law apply to, or what does the statute or regulation apply to? That's very, very important. Okay? So, in law, it doesn't matter what term you use, provided that you define it. And it doesn't matter what it applies to, provided that you specify exactly what it uh, 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 applies to. All right, so a lot of what has been going on in procedural and administrative law, uh, most especially here in this country, um, no country is immune to these same principles, uh, they've redefined the terms. We don't realize that there are three different languages at least. The language that we use, the common language, uh, the language of finance, and the language of law. Okay. If you say a particular word, and you refer to a particular word, and let's use one that's pretty important, person. You and I, we know that person means flesh and blood human being. Or even the word human being is akin to a monster. You might as well use the word hominid. Right? Man, woman, and people are what you folks are. Person in law means something else. Okay? Person is an entity under the jurisdiction of a corporate fiction of law. So if they say, are you this person? And you say, yes. They don't mean, are you this flesh and blood man or woman? They say, are you this commercial entity under my jurisdiction? You say, oh, yeah, 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 I am. I am your slave. So then they act and treat you like the slave that you've just admitted to. That's the law. You decide how you were going to be treated. Okay? They've done this with person. Okay? They've done this with uh, the entity called resident of your several state. They do this with, they've done this with uh, U.S. citizen. Folks, you have to realize that a U.S. citizen didn't exist at the time of the Republic. Your citizenship came, you were a citizen of one of the several states. You weren't a citizen of the United States. That entity wasn't really created until after 1871 and, and specifically empowered under the 14th Amendment. What does it say in there? It says, well, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here. I mean, it, it, I would suggest, you know, reread re it. It says any citizen of the several states is a citizen of the United States and subject to its jurisdiction. Okay, well, this is what they, you know, okay. So you read that and you say, oh, okay, well, why? Well, because in the old days, you were a citizen of the state. And they said that, oh, if you declare yourself now, if you declare yourself a, a citizen, a, 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 a state citizen, which uh, they changed from a union state to a federal state, um, right? Because we have federal states now. We don't have union states. Union states went out the window in March of 1861. Uh, March 27th, to be exact. Um, so that's that's when Union states. Now we have federal states, right? Uh, so so if you're a citizen of the federal state, which the federal state is subservient to the main the, the United States the federal government, then then you are subject to its jurisdiction. And what are they doing? Well, they're they're saying that a a U.S. citizen by its nature. <laughs> is an entity subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. Now, does that mean a man or a woman is automatically subject to the United States of America, uh, the federal government of the United States of America? No. No. But if you declare yourself a U.S. citizen without first reserving your rights, you are subject to that jurisdiction. You cannot be forced into jurisdiction. It has to be willing. You have to consent. Most folks don't realize that by simply saying I am a U.S. citizen, that you are, con you are consenting to be a slave. 
And I mean slave. I mean, you don't have money that you can use to convey, uh, uh, lawfully convey ownership of property. You can't truly own property. You do not have the right of self-determination. And you voluntarily waived any perceived constitutional uh, protected rights or any real right under law. You've basically declared yourself to be a slave. And all the federal government is doing is indulging your decision by your willing consent. All right? Do they tell you this? No. They just tase you and beat you. Drag you out of your house and say, yeah, you better do what you're told. Even more dangerously, if you don't know these principles, you don't know what a U.S. citizen is, you're technically in, uh, incompetent, mentally incompetent, irresponsible. The irresponsible don't exercise rights. They can't, right? With rights come responsibility. If you're irresponsible or incompetent, even mentally or otherwise, then you can't exercise a right. Why? Because when you exercise a right, you're responsible for the consequences. Right? If you're not responsible for the consequences, you can't exercise that right. Somebody else is responsible. Somebody else has those rights. And that somebody else tells you, those that are irresponsible what to do. Welcome to America. Don't like it? Right? It's the law, folks. It's the law. And it has to be that way. There's nothing forced here. Nothing. You either are knowledgeable about the way the things work, or you're not. Okay? All right? So, by redef you can literally, in, in a follow-on body of law, redefine the terms and contracts, right? The, 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 the terms of contract, I mean, the idea is by, by manipulating the language. And, and, and that way, uh, the things that it applies to, or the people that it applies to, uh, and the and the situations that it applies to merely by changing declaring the lang language of law, right? And how do they declare it? Well, I mean, one way is in the Thomas Register. Uh, you've got all federal law and anything that comes out of Congress and anything that comes out as an executive order and, and you know agency laws. It, it's all posted there, okay? And they've been rewriting and changing things, manipulating, tweaking it. And, and, and quite frankly, there, there, there's no way out of that system. Okay? And, and not only that, but I've talked to high-level law enforcement within the federal government, and they basically tell you that there's no way out of the system. The trick is, is not to get yourself into that, okay? or at least know how to immunize yourself. And, and that's not most people, folks. Okay? That's not most people. Most people are subject to it, and most people are slaves. Sorry, it's just the way it is. Okay. Um, so, so this element of language, and the element of the redefinition of turn. Hey, shoot, you can call a cat a dog in in in, in, in the you know in a statement of law, if you want. You know, and at which point, from their perspective, uh, I mean, you know, for them, cats are dogs, right? So we go running around wondering why the the dog is meowing. You know, it doesn't look like a dog, right? So, so these, this is one of the primary ways of uh, of tricking you, okay? And I, a nice lady that 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 actually uh, was able to get through this process. Um, we, we we talked about it, and I we were on the phone, and you know, I talked about something, and she said, I I've not heard this in any of your videos, and I, I I'm sure I've done it, and but you know maybe I haven't, and I want to talk about the understand trick. Okay, now this is a very effective trick. It's a very simple trick, and it's used a lot, uh, most especially uh, by law enforcement or anybody in a uh, enforcement uh, position. Uh, enforcing the terms of a contract uh, and compliance with the contract or the social contract or, or whatever. Um, the understand trick is very, very effective. Okay, well, what am I talking about? When a police officer uses the understand, uh, uses the word understand, what is he doing? Well, he's attempting to gain authority over you. Okay. 
All right, so he says, let's say, for instance, you're walking down the street, and he's got a perpetrator off to the side, and the, co uh, and the police officer uh, looks to you, and he says, you know, if you don't leave, I'm going to arrest you. Do you understand? So what is he doing? Technically, he's saying, do you stand under me? Meaning that, do you place me over you? Do I have the authority over you? Are you my slave? If you say yes, then you are his slave. If you say no, then he uses the other side of the understand definition to say, oh, you lack the capacity to comprehend what I'm saying, so therefore you're mentally incompetent. Since I am responsible, and you are not because you're incompetent, uh, incompetent, I gain power over you under the law. And you are as a slave. So when people say the word understand, most people, you and I, in the common language, we think, we think uh, comprehend. But that's not how they're using that word. They're gaining authority over you, and they're asking your permission to do it. And you're giving them the permission. Whether you answer yes or no to that question, you're screwed. It's a totally loaded question. And that's how they simply gain lawful authority and power over you, by asking your permission. Because, hey, how many people say, hmm, he says, do you understand? How many people actually respond, I comprehend what you just said, and no, I don't agree with your contract. Have a nice day. There's no conflict there. You're just not accepting his authority over you. However, that doesn't give you permission to go and break the law or hurt somebody or violate that. And, and, and quite, quite honestly, a reasonable man w would suggest, uh, wouldn't even get to that position, because if, if a police officer has a perpetrator off the side there and you're walking down the street, uh, that officer may or may not be able to control the person that he's got under custodial arrest, and you may become to injured. So, I mean, why is the police officer doing it in the first place? Well, he's looking out for your interest. With, with, with the thought that, hey, wait a minute, you are a man, and you deserve protection, so he is doing that. So no reasonable man would tell the cop, hey, you know, you know screw off, man, right? Now, if you had really some place to go and it was an emergency, then, you know, hey, you, you, you could basically say, you know, I comprehend what you said. I have something to do. It's more important than what you're doing right now. And I accept the responsibility. And, you know, the police officer, uh, hey, folks, they know, they know what their function is. They're here to take care of the confused and the irresponsible. That's their job. And it is not an enviable job, folks. It is not an enviable job. Most people are confused. Most people under the law are considered uh, insane. And, and they are literally babysitting an entire country of people who are totally irresponsible, that, that are a danger to themselves and other people around them. So cut the guys up and, 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 and guys and gals who, who are uh, law enforcement. You cut them a break. Okay? They're, they're, they're not the people that you go after. All right. There, there's no. They are. They are following their procedures. They're doing what they're told. And and for you to sit there and argue with them is, is a fool's errand. Why? Because they're not the ones that have determined what it is that they will do, uh, should do, and, and shouldn't do. And there's no purpose in arguing with them because as long as they follow the procedures, uh, they're immune. Okay. So for you, that is not the place where you argue, uh, argue that. You argue that before a magistrate or a judge. Uh, and, you know, if you're smart, you know the law. So you can immunize yourself from, from that, that, that commercial venue. Okay? It, it, it's not a matter of being in that situation. You never get in that situation in the first place. Why? Because you're not creating victims and you're not creating an outrage. Okay? So slavery itself is not something that's forced on you. It's something that you volunteer for. Now, you got to ask yourself this. Why in the world did you end up in a situation 
where somebody starts using physical force against you to arrest and detain you. Hmm? Think it was an accident? Things don't happen by accident. Not one thing. So if you're in a position where somebody gains the, uh, the power to detain and arrest you, then you made a decision in the past that caused that to unfold, and that is a consequence of a poor decision. That is not a bad guy or a good guy, right, doing something against your will and forcing you. No, these are consequences of a mistake, an error that you made in the past. And if you're not conscious of that error, then what you're going to do is you're going to tr attempt to transfer responsibility and say, oh, well, you know, that bad man over there, he did that to me. He enslaved me. No, 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 no. You enslaved yourself. You did it. And the only way you're going to get out is doing that. But if you sit here and continually blame the master for your enslavement, you will never be free. You did this. Not them. Okay? So, one of the most important elements of enslavement is, is the use of contract. Okay? Now, we remember signing, you know, the mortgage agreements. You know, there's this, like, stack of paper. You know, I don't know how many pieces of paper you have to sign you know you and, and and well quite frankly you're gonna sit there uh, it would take you a week to read the stuff nobody reads it you just sign it you don't even know what you're agreeing to <laughs> you, you sold your your firstborn didn't even know it trust me you have and it's like those uh, uh end user license agreements right when you join facebook yeah <laughs> there's nothing left here folks because they say, oh, well, uh, you have to abide by, you know, some sort of implied contractual terms, right? You know, the contract through the use of money, uh, adhering to all of the statutes uh, um, uh, of the uh, federal government of the United States. You're not going to do that. You can't. You know why? <laughs> it takes more than 700 lifetimes to get through it. That's if you're reading it eight hours a day, right? Eight hours a day. Okay, every single day it takes 700 lifetimes to read the federal law, the uh, the state law, um, the uh, agency law. I mean, there's so many things that you're subject to that you have no idea. And 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 and, and folks, you have to admit you have you have to recognize that these people that call themselves legislators and even presidents, they're not reading this stuff. They're not writing that stuff. It's handed to them, and they get they put their signature on it, and, and they're obligating you to it, and you don't even know it, and they don't even know it. Right? There's Easter eggs in all of them. And, you know, I, I imagine that some of these people that are actually responsible for actually writing the law put tons of little Easter eggs in there. You know? Just clowning on them. You know? And, and because these people don't read that, and, and not only that, but is it reasonable to expect that you're going to do all of that? No, it's not. It's not reasonable. Right? So, uh, I mean, and, and it's not, I mean, the whole idea of ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, you know, if it takes 700 lifetimes to read the thing, uh, I mean, <laughs> you're ignorant. And, and you have no reasonable way of remedying that ignorance uh, through their system. So, so the best way to approach this is, is not entangle yourself in it, okay? Because um, there, it doesn't provide a remedy and recourse. It, it doesn't provide due process of law. It doesn't provide any of the rights that were part of the Constitution, okay? So, so let's look at uh, some of the post-reconstructive uh, uh, amendments that, that actually uh, are, are instrumental in, in, in the enslavement of, uh, of modern people. Uh, the 13th and 14th Amendment. Okay, the 13th Amendment, let's look at it. It bans slavery and involuntary servitude, uh, except, uh, uh, except for uh, when, when you're convicted of a crime, in the, in the conviction of a crime. Now, what doesn't it ban? And, that, and, that, and that's the more important question. I'll tell you what it doesn't ban. It doesn't ban voluntary servitude. If you 
decide that you want to be a slave and want to be a slave, 13th Amendment doesn't ban that. Voluntary servitude is permitted. So you volunteered. Yeah, it's the same reason. I mean, it's like the income tax. You know, it's voluntary. You volunteered. Oh, you, you might say, no, I didn't volunteer. Ah, but you did. You just don't realize you did. Okay? So there's a process of waking up that has happened. Okay? So wake up. Okay? Now, are you going to free yourself by t uh, taking up arms? Well, you're going to look at the movies here. Right? Well, like the Avengers. I don't want to necessarily single them out. Yeah, look at all of these movies. What do they do? Oh, the, the, the guy on the scenes, you know, he, he's got some part. He's fighting against the government, fighting against somebody else, fighting, fighting, fighting. You know, man against man against nature, man against, you know, the establishment, man against society, man against this. And, and, and more often than not, what do they do? Well, you know, hey, here's the recourse. It's just natural. Just pick up your gun and just start fighting. Yeah, that'll get you through. Yeah, if you got the bigger army, you're going to win. All right? That's not the way it works. Never did. Because you get to the point of violent conflict, then you're on the wrong side. All right? Somebody is doesn't know the truth. And chances are it's you. Okay? So fighting is not going to get you out of here. Uh, awareness, attention is going to get you out of this. Okay? Attention. The law is inside you, folks. You have to unlock it. You do that through through a diligent introspection, through taking your life experience seriously, knowing that it's teaching you this. Okay. Now, if you go to the Roge website, I put a link to the cheat sheet Mark V. That will talk about some of these principles. Okay. So it'll show you how contract works. you got to know how contract works. If you don't know how contracts work, then chances are you've voluntarily obligated to yourself to something that you really shouldn't have obligated yourself to. And you can't free yourself without that knowledge. Sorry. If you don't know the contract exists and you're performing into the, uh, according to the terms of the contract, the law says, hey, the contract's enforceable. If you do know, it changes everything. So you have to know the principles of contract. If you don't, then you're subject to it. And it's all self-imposed obligations here, folks. Okay, You've convinced yourself that you have no power. That's not to say that you can just simply say, no, I'm not doing it anymore, and then just walk away. No. It doesn't work that way, because there's going to be a law enforcement officer that's going to show up. He's going to force you into compliance. Because you're going to give him that power when he shows up. You're not going to be able to reserve a right. You're not going to be able to protect yourself. And you deserve to get tased. It's a lesson. All right? So hit the cheat sheet Mark V. It works. Um, and it has a lot of elements. And here's one of the things, too, that, that we need to realize. The cheat sheet, done. if you actually get through and get it, um, you, you can free yourself. But most people don't want to be free. Most people are quite happy just simply knowing that freedom is available to them. It's a very effective way of maintaining slavery. Give them the answer. Right? Then it's a function of the choice. Because they always give you a choice. Right? This is why in movies, uh, it, it, it's out there. Right? And how does that work? They can't enslave you against your will. You have to consent to it. So what do they do? They put that choice in front of you. Now you, often, many people, uh, don't know that they're being given that choice. Right? And, and that's the law. Okay? Um, if you perceive yourself to be my slave, and I go to you regularly and I say are you sure you want to continue being my slave and you say yes then that's the law then you're my slave
So as a function of keeping and maintaining slaves, they have to continually ask us that question. But we never get to, cho uh, to, get to a point where we learn how to say no. We don't even recognize that we're being offered that choice. If you look at the Matrix movie, that, the whole Matrix series itself, they're showing you your enslavement. It's not a story, folks. They're showing you that you're trapped within a system. And it's a subconscious choice, like in the, in the Reloaded. It's a subconscious choice. They have to give you the choice. But if you don't realize that it's being done by you, that you're the one doing it, you're a slave. Okay? So that, that element's important. That choice is important. You're consenting to your own slavery. Why? You don't know the law, folks. You have the law within you, but you're saying no. I don't want to know. Right? Why? Because, hey, look, let's look at freedom. Freedom is a scary thing. Okay? Freedom is a scary thing if you think that it's just a bunch, you and a bunch of other, you know, uh, you know, uh, hominids on this planet, right? Subject to luck, chance, and accident. If that's what you think, then freedom is dangerous because, well, any of these people could just, you know, hit me upside the head with a hammer anytime they want. <laughs> that's not the way things work. If you get hit upside the head with a hammer, there's a good reason why that happened. If you don't know that reason, then you're confused. Don't. There's no reason to put yourself in those positions. It doesn't work that way. This is not TV, folks. Television is a lie. The stories, they're fictions. They tell you they're fictions. Not only that, but a lot of the news programs are fictions. Why? Look what they're saying. They're lying through their teeth half the time. And the fact that they don't admit it means they're lying again. It's not truth. Movies? It's a story, folks. Oh, based on a uh, based on a true story, really? <laughs> yep. First paragraph, they're off the program. Yeah. Oh, the people, the people involved might be there. I mean, there may be elements of the story that's there, but folks, there is nothing on television that's not contrived. All right. That's a function of Hollywood. Okay. It's the function of the news media is to make sure that your escape is encrypted and hidden. You know, it's, it's not bad enough that the door is so narrow, right? And hard to get through. Not hard, but uh, uh, that, that, you know, it, it takes, a, you have to be right in the right alignment and you have to be ready. Otherwise, you don't even see the door. That's not bad enough. Fact is, we've cluttered the doorway with all kinds of stuff in the way. Our own bad perceptions, our own false assumptions. Right? Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're sitting here listening to a bunch of people that never seen the doorway telling us how things are. Well, yeah, and what are they going to do? They say, well, there's no escape from this. Better do what you're told. Are they helping? No. They're not helping. All they're doing is reinforcing your hopelessness so that you never attempt to actually look in a completely new direction. Why? Because they tell you, hey, look, I mean, it's, oh, it's, it's terrible. You got nothing. Right? You got nothing. You're outcast. You know? Um, you know, look, look, look at society. Right? What do you want? Right? What was the whole idea of a social contract? The whole idea of the social contract is this. There, has, there is no such thing as true freedom. Okay? A social contract is this. What is the minimum amount of restrictions required such that you and I can be happy? Are you happy if I'm hitting you upside the head with a hammer? Are you happy when I'm stealing from you or killing from you or killing you? No, you're not. Okay. So to be here, 
We have the, we have to have a base set of restrictions such that this experience becomes valuable and fun. But we're not there. We've we got so many restrictions now that it's no longer the pursuit of happiness. It is, let's just basically survive. And nowadays, most people out there are just waiting to die. Okay? Just waiting for it to be over. And they're hoping that when the end comes, it's not going to hurt that bad. That's no, that's no fun, folks. And that was never what this, this was to be about. Okay? Now, hey, uh, it does, however, make the liberation aspect the escaping of the slavery, that much more fun, right? Nobody, I mean, an unchallenging game is not worth it. Worth it. It's like, well, it's like I say often, right? A boring, nobody rides a boring roller coaster. There's, we've got to have some skin in the game. It's got to be a challenge. And this is a challenge. This is a challenge. Navigating that doorway is a challenge. It is a challenge. Does it mean that once you go through the door, the game's over? Oh, no. No, 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 no. It's just the beginning. Escaping through the door is simply graduation, uh, graduating kindergarten. Wow, now that you know the law, now you, 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 you can apply it. it. It's the difference between sitting down to a poker game and not knowing the rules, and then finally becoming proficient at it. That's when it gets really fun, folks. But until you know the rules to poker... You got really no business playing because you're going to lose everything and you're not going to like it. All right? And so that's where we're at. You know, why does everything have to be so terrible? Right? Why does everything have to be? Well, it makes getting through the doorway, escaping this slavery, so much better. So much more fun. An actual reward. And it is a reward. You'll laugh. I mean, the people that go through the process, they just laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> like a big joke. Yet, people are still trapped within the system going, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I mean, look what's going on in the United States right now. The government has failed to protect the unborn children. Okay, that's, that's a you and me trying to get into the game with the expectation that, hey, wait a minute, I'm to be protected. Well, they're not protecting you. How dangerous is that? Oh, it's incredibly dangerous. So you got people out there. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, listen, hear me out, because I'm going to say something that's going to piss you all off. But hear me out. You'll understand what I'm saying. Okay, I'll get to the good part. Unborn child does not have any rights. None. No rights. Why? An unborn child is not responsible. With responsibility comes rights. If you're going to do something, there are consequences. And you will accept. You will sustain those consequences. You will be responsible and accountable for that which you, or for any action that you engage in. If you execute a right, then it's constructive. If you execute a wrong, then it's going to hurt. Either way, you are responsible. An ch unborn child is not responsible. In fact, a child is not responsible. A child can't consent. Okay? Until the age of consent, he cannot consent. So what does that mean? A child does not have rights. Why? Because a child is not yet responsible. So is that the reason why the unborn child should be protected? That, that they have rights? No, that's not the reason. The reason why you protect the child is because they are irresponsible. And they have no power. Why? Because people who are responsible and that can exercise rights have a duty to exercise care. And all of those people around them who are irresponsible and cannot protect themselves. That's a duty. That is a minimum standard. You violate that, the universe is going to just, well, hit you upside the head with a hammer. You don't believe me? You watch what happens now. You think the federal government was in turmoil? You, you, you watch. 
This was a basic statement of policy protecting the, the, uh, the those that were too weak. Right? Technically, that's why Sodom and Gomorrah got got uh, got destroyed. Now, it wasn't because of sodomy or any of that, but that sodomy and that, that lasciviousness and that behavior actually distracted them from doing, uh, meeting their primary duty, and that was to strengthen the weak, to protect the weak and the infirm and the old and the elderly and the young and the incompetent. That's the duty. You fail that duty, guess what? <laughs> You're going to have your rights taken away. Just the way it is. It's golden rule, right? It's not just a good idea. It's the law. You don't protect the defenseless, then you will become defenseless, and you will not be protected. Watch, watch it happen. It'll unfold right in front of your face. This is a problem that the Catholic Church has right now, and not just the Catholic Church. A lot of churches right now, right? They're not protecting the weak. They're not protecting the children. They're abusing the children. You don't do that. Because when the child gets the age of consent and realize what their, the adults who had, a, 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 had a, a responsibility to exercise care and failed in that, they realize that, hey, wait a minute, I'm a victim of a crime. What do they do? Oh, they create a problem. Here in America, we need to figure out that what we're doing to our children right now is we'll come back. Don't expect them to take care of you when you're old. They're going to euthanize you, or worse, just march you into the sea. Why? Because you abuse them, they're going to abuse you. They have to. It's the law. All right? So hopefully this video has given you an inkling of some of the elements required uh, uh, to, to free yourself from slavery, to understand the mechanism of slavery. Because it's really important for you to think about what that is. Do you feel free? Are you free? I asked that question myself back in 1999. Am I happy? You know, am I free? I didn't. I didn't feel free. Right? Do I feel free now? Oh, absolutely not. Mm -mm. No. Uh, it is equitable. I enjoy it, but I have given up the idea of, uh, of true freedom because it's not what I want for you, all right? Freedom is, freedom is not what you enjoy. It's what you permit others to enjoy because if you don't permit others to be free, then you are not free. Why? Because they're not going to be, uh, there'll be no re reciprocity. So you gain your freedom by giving that freedom to others. Right? Test these principles, folks. Don't listen to me. Test them. You can. If you don't know how, you know, hit me up on Twitter, uh, on Twitter, um, Twitter or Facebook. I'm out there. You can find me. My YouTube page. All right. My I'm open. My, my shoot. You can even find my phone number. I ain't. I ain't scared to put that out there. You hit the website. You'll you'll find it. It's there. Or at least the the uh, the email address, and I answer. People aren't beating the door, beating the door down to talk to me about this stuff. You know why? Because it's a narrow door, right? It's a narrow door. It's hard for them to even get to the point where they can even watch a video like this. Why? Because I'm <laughs> just some insane nut job. Doesn't know what he's talking about, All right? And it'll be that way. Until you actually go through the process. You ask somebody who's gone through the process. <laughs> they'll tell you, hey, he's not a nut. All right? So test the stuff. Be skeptical. Okay? Think about this stuff. All right? Now, I haven't covered everything here. Okay? I haven't. Okay? But the base mechanics of it is that to free yourself, you have to have a knowledge of the law. You have to understand the principles of law, and you have to know how to rationally navigate that. Okay, and 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 then you have to be willing to allow your perception to be reconciled with reality. And we cling to what we have here. We cling, and we cling way too hard. 
and you know it, it's just like you know you're sitting here and you say you know i want a bicycle i want a bicycle i want a bicycle i want a bicycle you know and it's like okay well you know if that's all you want okay uh, i was gonna give you a mini bike but if you just want a bicycle sure <laughs> you know you know so so you know the opening yourself up the opening of yourself up to simply entertaining things that are are, are you know atypical uh, extraordinary or unusual okay a, a lot of people are uh, afraid of that why because you know hey you know gaining your freedom means wow I'm now free uh, anything can happen uh, and then of course we we're afraid of that it's the unknown but let me tell you what I've been in the unknown since 2006 and I love it <laughs> Are you kidding <laughs> I love this game right and and you can ask anybody that's gone through that process they'll tell you the same thing it immediately changes you actually I have a good time doing stuff can't help but be happy even in the worst of it because that's the fun part it doesn't have that emotional you know you're not carrying around that emotional baggage about it you know it, it becomes a documentary a, a lesson and it's instructive and it's constructive and has value your life now and your life experience has value it's not just this endless you know getting beat at least now when you're beat there's an objective. There's something valuable that you gain from it. It's not just suffering for, for no reason. There is a reason. And we need to start paying attention to those reasons. All right, folks. I'm Roge, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.